I am IT at the Spencer Library, and I'm going to talk about hacking your Android device, making the most out of your device. Okay, a little bit about Android. Um, it was founded by Andy Rubin, who was a veteran Apple engineer. He headed Android until 2013, until which he took over their robotics division and then he resigned a year later. He went solo. I don't know exactly what he's doing now, doing some sort of startup stuff, if, if I recall. I think it's cybernet. Okay. Um, Android was purchased by Google in 2005, and it's based on the Linux kernel. Android was, Android's alpha release was in November 2007 and the first phone was the T-Mobile G1. It is currently the best-selling OS on tablets since 2013, and it dominates the smartphone market. Um, it has a zillion different handsets. You can get them from very high quality flagship models to super, super cheap models that you can get in the little bargain smart talk, or what is it, straight talk? aisle at Walmart, so you can get it for pretty much any budget. So that's one of the big reasons that it really dominates the market right now. So um, this was by Gartner in February 2016, and it shows worldwide Android has 80.7% of the market, iOS has 17.7, Windows still actually hanging in there at 1.1. BlackBerry actually still exists at point two, and others. I don't know what's out there besides Tizen right now. Um, WebOS is dead, so there's probably little ones out there. Ubuntu. The biggest manufacturer right now is Samsung. They have a billion different devices from flagships to really, really cheap things. Then you have Apple, Huawei, Lenovo recently bought Motorola, Show Me, and then the others. And even BlackBerry is jumping on the Android market. They now have their device with a slider keyboard, keyboard running Android. So I don't know if they're even, I imagine they're still running their original software or some sort of version of it, but you know, their attempt to stay relevant, now they're jumping on the Android bandwagon too. So Android tends to, na they name their models after desserts. So it started out in 2009 with Cupcake, and they had Donut, Eclair, Froyo, Gingerbread, Honeycomb in 2011 was a tablet only version. And then once they switched to Ice Cream Sandwich in, again in 2011, it went to a, a, a kind of a hybrid, it'll work on both. Then they have Jelly Bean, Kit Kat, Lollipop, and now we're up to Marshmallow. And as of April, it's on 4.6 of all, de all devices accessing Google Play. And um, a little bit, Nexus devices are ones that are, ish, are manufactured by Google by various, they contract with different manufacturers. They've used um, Asus, um, LG, different manufacturers, and they will put out a, a peer device that you can purchase directly from them. And as soon as the new version comes out, they will push it directly to your device. And so, you know, if you're going to toy around with Android, those are definitely the, the versions to get because they're unlocked as long as you're getting them from Google. If you're buying them from a carrier, it may not be. So, some of the benefits of rooting. You can port apps from other devices, like cameras and features. 
when the different devices come out, every manufacturer puts a different spin on it. So like, for example, the Moto X was really exciting because it had the voice activated stuff kind of first. And so as soon as that came out, a lot of the developers were ripping that from the, from the, the stock ROM that that came on. And then we're putting that into their own, into their own ROMs and then releasing that for the various devices. A lot of times a um, device comes out with a really awesome camera app. So that'll get pulled from a device so that you can load it onto, onto your device. But that oftentimes will not work if your device is not rooted. So that is one thing to consider. Bloatware, nobody likes bloatware. Um, you know, you get all sorts of games. I get the, you know, the NFL app has come on every device that I've ever bought. And I don't like football, so I know other people do, but, and all sorts of, you know, other apps, games, different things that you're never going to use. You know, the Verizon apps that are um, not nearly as awesome as, as freeware that you can get out there. Google issued apps or, or other you know third party apps that you can use instead, but they're taking up a ton of space, and a lot of these devices don't even have expandable memory anymore, so you're running out of space. So it's a nice idea to root so that you can get rid of some of that crap. Tethering limits. Um, obviously, the carriers are are not too thrilled with with you tethering. And really, since you know they're really kicking everybody off of your unlimited now anyway, you kind of have to watch that. Um, but it, it's a little bit more difficult on a um, unrooted device, and you're going to have more options to do that with a rooted device. You're going to be able to do more overclocking. And I don't, I don't think you can even over, really do much overclocking on an unrooted device, but that's something that you can do on a rooted device. So you can speed it up and um, really work with your, with your processor. You know, some of the risks with that is, you know, overheating. You're going to have a hot little brick of coal in your pocket if you're not careful. You can damage your phone, you can kill your phone, so you want to be really careful with that. You can customize your battery. And so my rooted devices have been a lot easier on the battery than my, than my stock devices because I can get rid of a bunch of junk in there that's you know, eating at my battery. So you can really get in there, see what's eating at your battery, what's what's causing problems, and get rid of it. You can do some really awesome backups. Um, there's a, an app that I really love called Titanium Backup. And it you know, really doesn't do much for you unless you're rooted. You can do stuff like, um, one of the things that I really love is right here. You can um, tap to switch profile. You can set up profiles on it for your apps that don't have easy ways to switch your different accounts. You can set it up so that you can put a widget on your home screen and then set up those apps to be multi-profile and then log in on each account under the different profiles so then all you have to do is just touch that widget, and then it'll log you into the other account. So you just pop that, and you're signed into your other OneDrive account. You pop that, and then you're back into the other one. So you know you could do that for you know whatever one you have. Um, the other things that are nice is you know if you're doing a lot of um, pl you know playing with if you're doing a lot of ROM flashing. You know, you can back up all of your data, your apps, and um, that way you can have your backups and 
then when you've you know, got a new ROM on there, you can just run your backup and it's gonna load up all of your apps rather than you know, trying to download everything individually. Um, being able to flash custom kernels is really nice because you can get a better performance, battery life, um, you can do more with tethering that's, you know, even on unsupported devices, uh, faster battery charging, uh, you can flash your kernels manually, and there is an app called um, Kernel Manager that works on some devices, but not everything, so you'll want to look into that before you go playing with that, before you hurt anything. Different ROMs out there. Some of the main ones out there are CyanogenMod and AOKP, which stands for Android Open Kang Project. And a lot of them are based off of those, the Paranoid Android. Um, I've messed with cyan mostly CyanogenMod and AOKP-based ROMs. And um, when you're looking for ROMs, you want to really make sure that they're ones that are designed for your phone or your tablet, because if it's even a little bit off, you might break your phone. So to truly master and own your device, you really need to root your phone. You're not going to be able to do a lot of the custom stuff that you, you know, really want to get into unless you do. And never take root for granted because the carriers and the manufacturers are making it harder and harder and harder. And every time somebody finds root, they go out and they release a new version of it that patches it. So if you want to do this, you really should buy unlocked versions. And so go for your Nexus devices or if you go to the manufacturer directly, if you go to the Motorola website, if you go to Samsung, Samsung tends not to be as good about it, but um, Motorola's really good about playing with developers um, in particular. But if you go directly to their website, you can usually buy an unlocked device. You're gonna pay full price for it. You're not gonna be getting a um, subsidized one through your carrier but you're not gonna be able to buy an unlocked device through a carrier generally. But when you get them through a carrier, you know, never take root for granted because the carriers are gonna patch it as soon as they can. Say that one more time, you can buy a phone directly from like Motorola? Yeah. And it won't be... You can, you can... So I can, do, I can install my own apps if I buy it directly. You can buy it directly from there with the ability to unlock your bootloader. And so you can either choose to buy one that's you know, compatible with your carrier, and then it'd be, you're bringing your own device to the carrier. And then you would activate it on whichever carrier you have. So you just have to buy the correct device and then activate it on, like if you have Verizon, you'd activate it on Verizon. But you're gonna be paying full price for it, so it's gonna be, you know, between $400, $700, whatever. So you're not gonna be getting it for the, you know, $199 or, you know, $20 a month or whatever. So there's also downsides to root. You know, the big one is you're gonna void your warranty. So if you did buy it from a carrier and you needed to return it for any reason, you know, you're kind of out of luck there. You may brick your phone. And um, I will, I have only, I've, I've kind of bricked one. I, I only call it mostly dead. Um, <laughs> because the battery died in the middle of a boot loop and then I did not have an external battery charger or a cable that would charge it from the boot loop. And then our local Verizon store didn't have any way to charge my battery. And it was such an old phone that it wasn't worth, you know, buying the extra stuff that I just got an ex a new phone. 
So I just call that one mostly dead. That, you know, if I did get a charger and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure I could, you know, revive that one fine. It just wasn't worth it to me. I got something shiny and new instead. And then immediately rooted it and threw a bunch of ROMs on it. And that one was like the best phone ever. It went through the, it went through the washing machine. It was just amazing. Big Motorola fan. So um, another thing with um, rooted devices is you need to really watch out for viruses um, and malware, exploits, that kind of thing. They're more likely to get you if you are rooted. So stage fright is a big one that has been making headlines probably recently. Also, poor John Snow here. Some apps will not work on a rooted device, and HBO Go is, is one. So I will admit I don't have the devices I've been using right now aren't rooted because I like to watch HBO. So um, I actually haven't done a lot of playing with my stuff lately. So I like to watch Game of Thrones, so I've left it alone. So this is something to, to consider because there are a lot of apps that will not let you use it if your device is rooted. So if you have considered all of this and you decide that you still want to do it, great, let's go. First thing I recommend getting if you have a device in particular that is um, one that does not have expandable memory is to get this male, connect, male connector to female full size, the USB ports. This thing has saved my bacon I don't know how many times because a um, couple of times I've accidentally deleted my ROM and I've been stuck in recovery and then going, oh man, I don't have an operating system on here. And so this way you can push it through on a flash drive. So this is an excellent device to have just in case. And something else to have is um, if you do have um, an external uh, batteries that you can pull is to have extra batteries and an external battery charger so that you have the ability to have more batteries so that you don't run into that problem like when I got stuck in a boot loop and then my battery died. Best place to get ROMs, look for information on roots, anything is at xdadevelopers.com. This is, you know, the go-to for everything. And um, they have, like, if there's a device that exists, it's on there. So you can see here, this is just like some of the HTC stuff and some of the ASUS stuff. And so pretty much everything is there. I can't imagine that there's a device that exists that somebody hasn't tried ripping apart yet. So once you get to your page, you, you find your device and get to your page. And then you look through there and find what you need. And make sure you're very careful to find your carrier because it makes a difference. Like um, with the G2, um, the Verizon version was even physically different. It, it required a different case and everything. So if you try flashing a ROM or try using root for the AT&T version on your Verizon phone, you're probably gonna brick it. So make sure you have the exact version and make sure you read the directions and then read them again and then read them a third time because a lot of these developers, they, they don't, um, they're a lot of times extremely cranky too. And they've heard all of these questions over and over and over again. So if you ask them another stupid question, they're going to bite your head off. So make sure you read all of the directions before you try it. And then read it again. When you say break your phone, does that mean it's completely That means it is a brick and there is nothing else you can do with it. If you are stuck in a boot loop, it's not bricked. If you are stuck in recovery, it's not bricked. You are able, you are probably going to be able to come back from that. Brick is when it's dead, dead, dead. Why does that 
because you've screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere along the line, you screwed up. And um, usually it's from either choosing the wrong files or some of them, like I'm getting into here, require a lot more work. Some of them you have to um, go and use Linux to update. And so if you don't have a Linux machine, you're going to have to use a um, virtual box or, or some sort of virtual machine to do it. Um, and some of them actually have, it's pretty much cheating. They have like almost an app for those devices where you just do like a one-click root and boom, you're in. But some of those ones that require a lot more, you know, you download a bunch of files, you load it into your virtual machine, and then work on it, you have a lot more room for error. And so you have to be really, really careful. So if you get the wrong files, and then you mess something up in there, it's, it's pretty easy to break your phone. So you've got to be really careful in there. And you know, if you root your device, break your phone, you can't you know, claim warranty on it or anything like that. And phones are expensive. So you want to be very, very careful. So it's really nice when you come across the devices that do have these one-click roots because you, you know, it, it feels like cheating, but it's really handy. So custom recoveries are something that you're going to use if you want to do any ROM flashing. There's two main ones. Clockwork Mod is more text-based. And then Team Win Recovery Project is over here on the right. It's a little bit fancier looking. Um, I've used both, and I tend to keep going back to um, TWRP twerp. I just seem to like it better, and it seems to give me less problems. And um, I don't know if it's still out there. There was a really cool one that I used with some Motorola devices called Safe Strap. And it kind of depends on your device. There's, I mean, there's so many different devices, and they're all so different. Safe Strap was cool because it had lots of different slots on it. I think it had three or five slots, so you could put several ROMs on one phone, and then you could, you know, boot between the different ones. So you could try, you know, uh, a cyanogen mod, an AOKP, and a paranoid Android all on one if, it, if you know, they were compatible with your phone. So that was a lot of fun, but um, these guys um, just run one at a time generally. So again, choose wisely which ROM you're going to use because they are designed for the individual phones. And if you get the wrong one, you could brick it. And um, like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that your battery is well charged before you do anything because um, a lot of phones you cannot charge while you're in recovery. So if your phone dies while you're in recovery, you're in big trouble. And if you don't have a swappable battery, you're in even bigger trouble. So um, other ways that you can customize your phone, these generally do not require root. These are launchers, widget makers, and icon packs. And you can get these out of the Play Store. Or um, I don't think you can do a lot of customization with the Kindles. I don't have a Kindle. I don't know what, what you can do with those screens, really. But um, with these, you can, um, you, you can really customize the background on any Android. But with these, you can make these you know, really fancy you know, clock and weather widgets. And then you can get custom um, icon packs from the store. And so if you're looking for you know, a certain you know, color scheme, or they have like holiday ones, if you want you know, Christmas theme or something like that around the holidays, you can do that. And so these are just a few of them that um, were in a group that I'm on. I really loved the Archer one and the Prince one. 
And so they have, you know, a lot of different ones. There are a lot of developers and artists that, you know, put a lot of work into these, um, into these icon packs. And they range from, um, you know, a few bucks, free to a few bucks. So definitely check them out. Um, there's also Android Wear. I haven't really played with it that much, but um, I have done some, you know, watch face design with watch, uh, what is it, Watchmaker Pro. And um, it uses Lua coding, and you can do a lot of design work with that. And so it is drag and drop if you don't want to do a lot of coding, so you can do a lot basically. But um, there's a lot of customization that you can do in there with um, multi page multi-pages and um, fading and such, so you can do that. Tasker is something that generally use, needs root to do a lot of the functions, and this automates your phone so that, you know, you can have it, if you, you know, plug in your phone, it does this. It's kind of like if, you know, for your phone. You can change your wallpaper if you do this. For a while, when I was, you know, staying up way too late on my phone, I had it, you know, programmed that after 10 o'clock it would change to pictures of spiders so that, you know, I wouldn't stay up late. And so then I would put it down and go to bed. And so you can, um, you know, program it to do different things. And a lot of apps out there actually integrate with Tasker. Um, I can't remember, there was, there was something I just saw recently that integrates with Tasker that is, was really cool. But if you don't want to root, and um, there's also a free version called Llama that does a lot of similar things too. All right, any questions? So when you're talking about the ROM and flashing and all that stuff, you're talking about the, you're basically rewriting the read-only memory on the phone? Correct. So if you mess that up when you're trying to change your files around, there's nothing else below that to basically recover from, right? No, no. That's, and why, so, that's why it's brick. Exactly, exactly. So how many ROMs can you put on one phone? General, it kind of depends on which kind of recovery you have. Um, like when I had SafeStrap, I think SafeStrap, I can't remember how many slots I had, if it was three or five. And then you could boot from the different slots. But generally, you can only have one at a time with, with the, um, the Clockwork mod and the, um, and the twerp. You run one at a time and then when you're done with that. But you can do backups of them and then keep them like on your SD card. And so then, you know, I back up my ROM and okay, and if you've got room on there, I can back up that ROM and okay, I'm tired of this one. Well, I'm gonna, you know, pull up Dirty Unicorns instead. And then when, you know, I get tired of that one, I can put that one back and then pull up Cyanogen Mod. And so you can run it that way. And then just do a backup of each one, but it's, you know, kind of a pain in the rear to do it that way, but it can be done. Let's, let's say I, I flash a new ROM on my phone, mm -hmm. and something breaks on it that I don't like anymore. I want to turn it into a warranty. I'm going to flash the stock ROM back on. Mm -hmm. Can I turn it? Right, can I ever pick it up? I don't think they would be able to know that it was rooted before. Like, let's say you overclock it and overheats, and then I flash the original one back on it. Probably not. They probably wouldn't know. Yeah. But. They might try to call your bluff on it and see, yeah. if, you, see if you're honest about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just secure guns. <laughs> yeah. 
once you, you know, because with most phones you can unroot and then, you know, go back to, you know, flashback to stock with um, uh, the, you know, like the system with, if I recall, the, the one with um, Samsung, you can use a process called Odin, and then it was FXC with Motorola, and what was it, did I use RSD Lite with my L LG? But, um, so you can go back to stock with the different, um, if you have the files. And generally, a lot of them, you can even do like an app on there that has, you know, unroot. So you can just stick an app on there and go in and click and, oh, I'm unrooted. And so, you know, if you need to do, you know, a different, uh, a different app or something like that, that you need to not be rooted for, you can like unroot. And so if you have one of those devices that has the one click root and then the, you know, unroot, it's kind of handy because you can just pop back and forth easily. But unfortunately, not all devices are compatible with such things. So if I want to see if my, my S5 one is a one-click root, I mean, that's a pretty popular phone. Uh, like, where do I, is it on that XDA? Yeah, look on XDA. XDA is the place to look. And then I would have to download that from my PC and or I can download it directly to my phone. Depends on what the directions are for that, but generally you download it to your to your PC and then run it th run it to your and then usually you download it to your PC and then connect your phone to your PC. Is the S5 the only Android phone you have? Or do you have an older version that you upgraded to the S5? Not right now, I'm cheap and decided S5. Okay. I was gonna say if you have like an older version, practice rooting that and then move on to your S5. Yeah. Samsung's pretty famous for, you know, patching those, those exploits right away. So, so they can be um, ones that are, that are um, harder to find roots. It's, it's often said, you know, if you really want to play with rooting, stay away from Samsung. If I am rooted, can I disable all feature you can and make sure you do that because I have access when I was rooted once I accidentally took an update and um, it caused a very big problem on my phone so always make sure that you do disable your updates I, I had the original droid when it came out and I rooted mine with Saijin mod or reset but um, I remember back then they specifically released updates for the purpose of breaking your phone if they noticed it was rooted. It would just come up and go, this device is no longer usable. And uh, they would hope you would take it in for warranty so they could laugh in your face. Yeah. Yeah, the, the carriers do not do take not kindly. they they are not they do not, you know, look look nicely upon this. So so they're they're not going to be very helpful or or um, look kindly upon this. So. Well, one of the big things that they did back in the day, iPhone users take this stuff for granted now. But when you send text messages or pictures via iPhone, uses iMessage to another iPhone, that's over your Wi-Fi. It doesn't, it's not a messaging fee for sending picture messages and stuff like that. And when I'm talking back when this was a thing, we paid for that. And when you rooted your phone, you could put apps on, you could just send pictures back and forth via Wi-Fi, and it didn't use any of your data, it didn't do anything like that. You could even make voice calls, VoIP calls, to your Android phone, and they were blocking all this. So that really ticked off the carriers, because the carriers were like, how are we supposed to make our money then? And back when you had unlimited, I was, I, if you're from this area, I had a, a Midwest Wireless. You remember that carrier? Oh man, I was so upset when I had to leave them. I yeah. had unlimited data, and I'm sure I cost them money. And I rooted mine and hooked that thing up to my laptop, and I used an app called Tether. Bam, I had unlimited Wi-Fi anywhere I wanted, or unlimited 3G anywhere I wanted when I had my phone with me in my laptop. I just recently lost my unlimited. I was, you know, through the Midwest Wireless, and I managed <laughs> to ride, hotel, yeah, to through all to, all to the Verizon, and I just lost it not yeah. that long ago. So I managed to ride it out for years with hand-me-down phones. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions? 
I have an old phone, a uh, S5, that I don't remember what update it was, but I updated it to the newer software, and it completely just destroyed my phone. Brought it into actually a Samsung rep at Best Buy in Sioux Falls. He tried to flash the ROM on it, so that didn't take care of it, nothing. So if he said, there's ways you can go back to a previous version mm -hmm. and make it work. Is that something that rooting does? Like to get, so like, I don't, like I said, I don't know what the update was, but let's say an update to, let's try to update to Marshmallow and I want to go back to ice cream sandwich. It, like it depends. Some, on some things you can go back and some things you can't. Okay. Um, rooting just gets, just gets you super user access. Yes. Um, with, with that, you'd want to use Odin to, to flash the files okay. and go back to, and I don't use, I did have, I had an S3, I had an unlocked S3 that I played around with for a while. And, um, but I never used anything stock. I really, really, really hate TouchWiz. And so, um, I never actually used Odin, okay. but so I don't know how easy it is to go back on that. And it might also depend on which particular version of Android too. Because I know that once they kicked over to, was it ice cream, was it ice cream sandwich that was 4.0, I believe? Um, it was really, you really couldn't go back to, was it Froyo before that? Whatever was, when it went to, to from two to four, because it skipped three, because that was honeycomb. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I honestly don't remember. So you'll, you'll really want to look into that and go to XDA and read about that before you do anything. XDA is like the Android Bible. Go in there and read everything about your phone before you do anything, because trying to go back, if you can't do that, will break your phone. So always read, read, read before you do anything or you're going to end up with a paperweight. Nobody likes paperweights unless that's what you want. It is a cool and, yeah. and you can get those much cheaper. You can just go pick up a rock outside, much yeah. nicer. <laughs> a very pretty rock. Yeah. Is it easier to uh, group cheaper phones versus more expensive or is it like to create a base? Which ones are easier? I don't know. I've never. I've, I've never. I've never. I don't want to sound snobby, but I've never had a cheap phone. Um, I work um, out in your shop, so if I had anything expensive, that's the first thing that would get destroyed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming the Chinese manufacturers you bought your phone from. Probably rooted it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's no because piece. I don't oh, know, yeah. because you might not also have the developer community for those because they're gonna say, I'm not gonna want that phone. So you might not have, you know, much of uh, a community for that of, of people finding options for that. It really so, didn't matter on my LG if I voided the warranty because they wanted to charge me five bucks a month on you know, insurance. But it's a $150 deductible and $145 phone, so. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, another option is go on like Swappa and pick up used phones. And you can get a, um, a really, you know, nice cheap phone for, you know, once that, um, you know, like the LG G5 is coming out. I loved my LG G2. That thing was really nice. And, um, I did a, a ton with that, and I think it was actually faster than my G4 once I got that, and that G2 was really nice, and you can pick them up really cheap off of Swappa right now, because everybody's going and getting the next model, and go up and pick one, you know, up that's, you know, a generation or two behind and, and mess with it, because people are unloading them. And Swappa's really good because they check the, um, Oh, I forget what that number, the little number that makes sure that it's not stolen. I thought, yeah, that, that thingy, yeah. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, that number to make sure that it's not stolen. And, um, yeah. Or you can just use it for, you know, if it is, you know, it's not a phone anymore, it's, you know, something to play with, and it's a Wi-Fi device. But, um, yeah, so, you know, pick up something used. I actually used hand-me-downs from a friend for years, 
and um, you know, with you know different ROMs and overclocking and that kind of stuff, you know, you can really get a speedy little device out of that. Go green cycle is the only place to get a good green phone. Okay. My dad was back in the show, I got this for like $800 because I still had like a year and a half of my contract and my old phone wasn't working. Yeah, awesome, yeah. Yeah, I've bought several used ones. Yeah, why why buy a new one? Am I able to put a different OS besides the intro on? Can I put a Linux on or like Cali or something? Some are compatible and some are not. Yep. So some take Ubuntu. It just depends. So this is yeah. a uh, Galaxy 7, or yeah, Nexus 7 with Ubuntu. So again, you know, go to XDA, see which ones are compatible, and then make sure it's compatible with your carrier. So not all phones are then compatible with your carrier. So you'll want to check that too. So, you know, you granted your phone, or granted group access to your phone, you said there were some security issues with viruses and malware. How big are those issues? I mean, I don't think they're that big of a deal. Like, I mean, if you were to get about your get like one of the like say viruses in your phone, uh -huh. like how what exactly does it happen to your phone? Make my hundred. Calls for you, yeah. Night. Yeah. Or, uh, it'd yeah. probably, you know, it'd probably be able to, you know, get in and, you know, send out emails and get into your apps and you get your personal, yeah, you know, get into your personal data. Well, I just, what, is it going to ransom your phone? It could. It could, yeah. And the real problem with it is, is that from a developer standpoint, Android's more dangerous for your phone than Apple is. Someone takes this app, they put it into a piece of software that scans your app, and they test your app on devices and emulators to make sure that they look legit, they look at your code base to see what it is you're doing. And after about two weeks of time, you'll get approved or rejected. Android, or, yeah, Google and Android take the, oh, we trust the community to, to be the sheriff's approach. And I can upload an app on the same day it's live in the app store, it can be full of viruses and malicious content, and it's going to take either Apple noticing, or me, uh, Google noticing it, or users reporting it, and then it'll get pulled. So that's the other danger about it, is if I have a computer rooted device, and my app has malicious code that can execute at a root level, you're really screwing yourself over on the phone. Yeah, so always read the reviews when you're downloading an app and make sure there are tons of reviews and good reviews on it. And check number of downloads, because another thing in the Android store is um, yes. notorious for is you'll see two apps, same names, same tech icons, different developers, one will have thousands of downloads, like hundreds of thousands of downloads, and this one will have like 25,000 downloads. And all they did is like, ooh, Angry Birds, look popular. I'm going to play upload Angry Birds with a space at the end, so it's a different app name, same icon, same game, we just downloaded it, decompiled it, put our malicious code in, and re uploaded it so you don't know better. So. And with those few reviews that are on there, I suspect it's you know, them over and over saying, great app. Yeah, the things that would say, best app ever, great game, fun, fun, fun. Yeah. So just make sure you're you know, getting something that has lots and lots of downloads and lots of good reviews. Or just buy it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I didn't catch that. <laughs> It's been a long day. Yeah. Any more questions? Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks.